Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And this is now part four of four of your tree care lessons. We started off with a review of the whitewash products. We talked about the Ivory Organics whitewash. We talked about the Ivory Organics 3-in-1. We talked about the Ivory Organics spray. We talked about all of these organic products that are here underneath me, as well as some liquid feeds and, um, and some organic compost that we've added to the soil as well that we picked up from the local nursery. Um, we talked about chemical fertilizers as well. And the three parts that we've discussed, the first one was the whitewash products, the second one is soil preparation, the third one is we talked about irrigation, and you can see that the water is still working its way down into the soil. But the last one we're gonna talk about is compost and the significance of compost in your garden. Um, before we get started, let me share with you um, what a good compost around your garden will look like. If you can take a look around me, you may notice that there's wood chips all around me here. Um, come and follow me and let me show you the significance of wood chips within your garden. Follow me. So a healthy garden, as you can see, I've got wood chips here in this part of my garden. We're right underneath our three-in-one apple tree at this point. But if we just pull back on the soil like so, I'm pulling back on the wood chips. You can see the earthworms that are jumping. There's microscopic things also here, which you may notice as well in white, which are called springtails. I don't know if you can catch up, catch in on those, but when they're wet, they typically wiggle all around. And then the other thing way back here, which I'm just gonna pull it out. Here, I'll get my hands underneath it and I'll put it back in the ground. But you can see we've also got mushrooms that are grown here as well. And these mushrooms are very integral to the health and the life of the garden here. I just wanna make sure those spores work their way back in. But let me share with you what's going on when we get back to our avocado tree that we're just about done with the planting. Follow me. So if there's only one thing you did in your garden, it would have to be this. More important than compost, more important than your organic fertilizers is adding compost around your trees. I'm going to get about another two to three more buckets full of compost and basically create a two to three inch layer of compost around these, around each of my trees in the garden. I'm being very careful to keep the, these wood chips away from the tree trunk so it doesn't contribute to again another phenomenon known as stem rot. These wet wood chips against the outer bark can create excessive moisture which can lead to rotting and eventually injury and harm to the plant. So make sure you keep at least a couple of inches to a few inches away from the tree trunk. And then what these wood chips are gonna do is one, it's gonna insulate and help retain, um, one, the temperature of the soil. Two, it's gonna help um, retain the moisture that you put around the true tree. Three, as these wood chips, and within these wood chips, I've even got some leaf mold as well um, from other trees in the garden and other clippings and I've also removed um, some vegetables that you know are expired for the year. All of that is going into my piles which I'll share with you in just a minute but what's happening is as these break down they're adding more elements into the soil. These are also feeding a lot of the soil biology that live just underneath the surface of the soil. So there's so much good happening by adding these wood chips around each of your trees. What your wood chips will also do is it's also going to believe it or not increase the soil temperature as these um, organic materials attract organic life to the wood chips, what it's going to do is it's going to bring all of these bodies, whether they be earthworms or bacteria or nematodes or the springtails, um, and there's millions and millions of life. Check out that monarch butterfly right next to you. Hopefully you can see that on our Fuerte avocado tree, which is going to show you at the end. And how beautiful is that? That there is a female monarch butterfly. So to continue on, so part of our organic garden is having those beautiful monarch butterflies as well, as well as all the other life that your organic garden will attract and support. What I now have between this tree and my next tree, which I wanted to share with you now, if you can back up just a couple of feet, um, you'll see what's also um, the Fuerte avocado tree. And we did a pretty severe pruning to it just a, about a month, about 30 or 60 days ago. And now check this out. 
we basically pruned a lot of the height off of the tree to encourage these lower branches to now grow. And you can see that we've got all of this new growth that has come out at these lower levels that would have otherwise been shaded by the upper canopy and it would have caused all of these lower branches to eventually die back. By managing the height of the plant, I'm able to now create lower supporting branches. And you can see that I've even used twine to kind of support some of these branches. But notice there's no knots around any of these branches. Even up here, the supporting branches do not have any knots, so I'm not constricting its growth. You can see that they're basically wrapped around and then wrapping around. And there's plenty of room for them to wiggle and grow. And eventually, as those branches get thicker, I'm going to help basically grow this into you know, more of a box shape and I'm being very selective in regards to the branches to basically maximize the amount of fruit per branch throughout the entire tree. This here is our Fuerte avocado tree known as a type B avocado tree. We just installed the Haas avocado tree behind me which is the type A avocado tree. You only need one avocado tree in your garden to basically make avocados but by adding an A and a B you'll increase your production. Research says between five to as much as 20% more avocados per tree per year. So that's why we've got these two trees and they don't need to be as close as these two trees are. Right now this is gonna be growing in this zone and this Haas avocado tree will be growing up and we're basically gonna be sharing with the neighbor. She basically said she'd love to have avocados on her side, but it's basically gonna fill up a good 15 to 20 square feet on this side. And again, through pruning man practices, we're, we're gonna be able to control and manage its size um, through selective pruning throughout the entire year. Now let me share one more really cool thing that I've got going on in the garden that most gardens I have not seen this be in practice. You can notice in behind my five in one fig tree, you can notice that I've got a compost bin over there. And that basically, you know, collects a lot of my kitchen scraps. I've got a lid on it and there's thousands of holes that I've wrapped around all the way around the sides as well as the bottom to help you know release any excess moisture out of there. Um, but a lot of my garden waste is in there, a lot of the kitchen scraps are in there, and, and again, it's contained with that lid to basically keep the natural wildlife that exists here in the community out of it. But what I've got going on between my trees are these piles, and this is something truly special that I've learned from a farmer in South America where they would do this in their orchards is basically take all of the cuttings from the trees and we talked about permaculture is returning all of those elements naturally back into the soil and you can see here were once our pepper plants in the garden which will be replaced with some other new fall plants um, in, the, in the upcoming week but here are all of those peppers underneath it you may notice are some sunflowers which came off of the sunflower. This is a California native sunflower and we're collecting the seeds um, for a giveaway that's coming up later on this year. And then you can see that it just gets more and more dry. Here's some avocados, leaves and branches. And the further down you go, the more and more decay that you're gonna find. At night, this is covered in slugs. I don't, for whatever reason, have snails here in the garden even though I welcome them to help further and accomplish the decomposition and decay process of these piles that I've got going on between my trees throughout the entire garden. Again, the goal is all of the elements that went into making these plants are gonna go right back into the soil and feed the surrounding trees. So a nice permaculture concept that I hope you guys integrate into your gardens as well. There's just one more thing I gotta share with you um, before we conclude. You can see I've already changed. I thought we concluded and um, I just gotta bring in one more lesson real quick before we conclude this part four. Um, as you can see, we've scooted back a little bit further. The um, Haas avocado that we just installed is behind me. This here is the Fuerte avocado tree. Um, it's about two years old, maybe two and a half tops. You can see how well established it got. And then over here, this is my lime tree that was installed the same time as the Fuerte avocado tree. And you can see that it's just loaded with lemons here. And when it gets really ripe, they start turning yellow. I should have harvested that a little sooner, but you can see that it's just loaded with dozens and dozens of limes on this tree as well. And as you can see, there's a compost pile right at your feet. And then if you come over here, there's another compost pile between the trees, but you don't have to move. You can stay right there, another compost pile and another compost pile behind that. So we've got all of these piles going on between the trees. But the lesson I wanna share with you is this really cool phenomenon. Uh, over here is a picture of one variety of tree and this here a completely different variety of tree. But underneath there's these roots that are maybe kind of touching but it's not necessarily that they touch. But what's over here and being highlighted are these mycorrhizal fungi root. And what's happening, if I can just kneel down here, but what's happening between the trees 
is hopefully the roots are not necessarily getting intertwined or grafted or anything else. But what's happening is we saw over there the, the little mushroom. The mushroom is the fruiting body of these mycorrhizal fungi, or also known as the hyphae, which are the roots of these mycorrhizae that can travel as far as a thousand feet and basically network all of the trees. So what's happening underneath all of this is those uh, mycorrhizal fungi are benefiting off of this organic pile that's um, breaking down. They're benefiting from each of these trees that are then supplying them with water and supplying um, nutrients and supplying sugars from these leaves. But in exchange, what these mycorrhizal hyphae are doing is they're also keeping the balance of moisture between the trees. And they're also offering some elements to the plants that otherwise wouldn't be available. I kind of jumped just because there's something here behind me I want to share with you as well. Let me um, grab the camera. But you can see that there's quite a bit of life in here. Coming a little bit closer, you can see well, this little guy over here. I thought he was going to jump on my head. A little grasshopper. Anyways, so the amazing and interesting thing that's happening is there's a communication going on between the trees, whether it be an avocado to a citrus or a banana to a pomegranate. There is a communication that's happening between the plants due to the mycorrhizal fungi that's living in your soil. And what they're doing is they're transporting elements and nutrients that these trees otherwise couldn't reach. And they're also keeping a nice balance of moisture between the plants as well. If there's a stress or some um, stress caused by pests or disease at one tree, it can communicate to the surrounding trees through the mycorrhizal fungi and the mycorrhizal roots can also help balance the stresses between plants as well. Um, and the goal is if one is stressing out, the neighboring tree can offer the benefit through the mycorrhizal um, roots and the mycorrhizal fungus. And in exchange, in, in, in other years where there's stresses, that same plant can offer benefits to, um, to its neighboring tree. So there's a, a nice symbiotic relationship. And so there's an, an amazing biology that's happening and an amazing biochemistry that's happening underneath the ground, which can only get improved by doing things organically. Adding your chemical fertilizers and your chemical pesticides to the garden destroys and collapses a lot of the biology that's happening here in your garden. I hope you found this educational lesson informative, and if so, be sure to like it. Most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all of your other educational videos by Ivory Organic. Thanks again for watching, and happy gardening.